Welcome back to Valaris of Wellington. My name is David Wilson, Master Instructor here at the school. Today we'll be discussing uh, combination numbers five and two. Uh, first combination we're going to cover, combination number five, deals with uh, L stepping out of the way of our opponent, uh, delivering a driving knife combined with chicken wrist or uh, crane's head. Um, this is to deflect our opponent's attack whilst getting out of the way and then delivering a back punch to the chin followed by a side kick cross and cover. Now the first thing I mentioned was an L step. For those of you unfamiliar with an L step, we're going to start in a horse stance. We're going to put our hands up on guard. We're going to draw our left foot to our right heel, stepping out the 90 degree uh, angle from our original horse stance into another horse stance. So we go from facing front to facing to our left side. Okay, again, that's an L step. Our hands are on guard. We slide and step. Now, for those of you that want to take this to a slightly more advanced level, we're going to shift our weight, rotate our hips, and move. Okay, so that's shift, rotate, we're going to draw and place. Okay, this is just uh, a, a way to increase the speed. If you're just looking to get your initial L step, we're just going to slide our left foot, step out into a horse, okay? Let's not complicate it too much. We just slide and step. Now, if the aggressor is in front of us, we want to keep our eyes on the opponent, okay? We're not so concerned about the strike that's coming towards us because the motion will be to push that away. Now, I'm gonna bring my left hand up into a knife and my right hand up into a crane swing or a uh, Sorry, a crane's head or chicken wrist. Uh, so during the course of this uh, instruction, I'm going to call it a chicken wrist. So we're going to L step, knife hand and chicken wrist. This drives our opponent's hand away. We rotate our body, drawing our right hand into chamber. Our left hand, you'll notice, stays up on a center guard position. We deliver a back punch to our opponent's chin. From here, we're going to shift, keeping our hands up in a guarded position. Flamingo, side kick, cross, and cover. Now, it's your choice if you want to pivot. I suggest you L step, block, turn, punch, up, pivot for your side kick, cross, and cover. If you're not familiar with pivoting yet in your side kicks, uh, keep the kick low, um, knee height preferably. Uh, you shouldn't need to kick any higher than that. Now, let's do it one more time. So, hands are on guard. We're going to L step, block or press our opponent to attack away. Okay, from here I'm going to rotate my body, pulling my right hand into chamber. Notice the squareness of my chest to my opponent. I deliver my back punch using my left hand as a pull for my right hand's push. We back punch to the chin, shift our weight for a flamingo, side kick, cross, and cover away from the opponent. That is combination number five. Now the key eye on combination number five would be done on the side kick, okay? So combination number five, L step, block, back punch, side kick, cross and cover, key eyeing on the side kick, okay? Take that, practice with your, uh, to the air a few times, uh, come back and we will uh, have a look at combination number two, thank you. Okay, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you got a chance to practice combination number five a few times in the air. Uh, now the sister combination to combination number five is combination number two. Now both these combinations are learned at orange belt ranking in our school. Uh, so far, if you're following along with the training, you'll, be, you'll have combination number six, combination number seven, and combination number three. Six and seven at white belt, number three at yellow belt, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, now combination number two and number five at uh, orange belt. Um, in orange belt, we're also going to touch on uh, some of the hand patterning that will go into our pinion two, as you've already are well into learning your pinion one, as you probably followed along with the videos that are here on the site. Um, but here's the, uh, the beginning of our combination number two. Now, now that you're familiar with an L step, we're gonna apply the L step into our combination number two. 
So our hands are up on guard. We're going to L step, rotating, blocking with a number three block to our opponent's attack. Turn the body, back punch. Notice I'm shifting my weight with a back punch to the chin. I bring my left foot to right foot and my elbow should now be resting on my opponent's shoulder. Okay, from this position, I'm going to step out and press with my elbow causing my opponents to balance to go in a third direction. I'll explain more about that in just a second. And then I make a circular movement with my hips, lifting the opponent's leg, step between his knees or her knees, as the case may be, and deliver a driving knife hand to the groin. That's combination number two. Okay, so the three points of balance. As I L-step and hit the opponent's arm, it's gonna drive the balance outward to their stems, okay? I turn my body back, punch to the chin. As you can probably imagine, that punch to the chin is going to cause the head to go back, affecting balance in a second direction. Now, as I step through an elbow to the shoulder or glance through the shoulder, some instructors teach it as an elbow to the center of the chest. I teach it as a glancing blow through the edge of the shoulder. I'm going to go down at a slight angle, causing a third point of balance. It makes the front leg light so that I can sweep the leg up out of the way step into position and drive a knife hand to the groin. Okay, um, I want you to practice this a few times in the air. Now the key thing I want you to focus on is you're going to L step, block, rotate for your back punch. Okay, now as you can imagine if I leave a big pause between each of my movements my opponent or the aggressor will have more opportunity to gain his balance back. So if I go block, punch, elbow, there's a big pause in between. We want to think about this as one, two, three, four. Okay? So we're going to L step one, two, three, four. There's our points of balance. Okay? You're keeping the spaces in between so the opponent's body is being kind of thrown all over the place, they have no point of reference, therefore the takedown becomes much easier. The majority of time that I see students that are having trouble with this takedown on an opponent is because they're leaving too much space between the movements. Um, if you already have combination number two, and uh, this is something that you're uh, having trouble with, shorten that space. Uh, think about being sooner with your movements rather than you know, just taking a picture of a pretty block or taking a picture of a pretty strike. Um, Again, experiment with this to the air. Uh, if you already have it and you'd like to experiment with it on a, uh, a partner, and there's someone there with you that's willing to allow you to do this on them, uh, make sure that your uh, person, your training partner, knows how to fall, because in number two, you are taking the opponent to the floor. Uh, just as when you were training with combination number three, the opponent is being taken to the floor. So it's important that for the safety of your training partner that you either have a crash mat or they are uh, skilled enough to know how to fall when being taken down. Um, so take it, practice, be safe, and uh, we'll be back in just a little while. Thank you very much.